Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Isn't the point of traveling to get away from it all, to feel the best you've ever felt? Then maybe you should check out Aruba. You'll spend your time relaxing on cool, white, sandy beaches and floating in healing blue water. You'll meet locals brimming with gratitude for an island that redefines what a paradise can be. When your trip comes to an end, you won't need another vacation because you just had the vacation. That's the Aruba effect. Plan your trip at aruba.com. This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 3105, When to Embrace Life's Red Flags by Jay Harrington of lifeandwhim.com. And I'm Justin Mollock. Welcome back to a Sunday bonus episode where I give you a little extra content from a podcast in our network that I think will also help you live a life that's a bit more meaningful and happier. And this episode is coming from Optimal Relationships Daily today. So without further ado, here's Greg with another post as we optimize your life. When to Embrace Life's Red Flags by Jay Harrington of lifeandwhim.com. Last weekend, we went on a family vacation. The place we stayed wasn't five-star. It was a bit crowded and noisy at times. The bathrooms were gritty. The food was far from perfect. There was no air conditioning, and our room lacked fluffy pillows and high-thread count linens. The five of us, plus our dog, were packed into a small room. We were literally stepping on top of one another. We went camping, and it was one of the best experiences of our summer. On Sunday morning, Heather and I got up and weighed our options. It had been a long weekend. Sleep was spotty, and it rained overnight, so we were dealing with soggy shoes, towels, and other items that we had forgotten outside while trying to get everyone to bed in our small camper the prior evening. Hitting the road and getting home early to unpack and take hot showers seemed ideal, but we had told the girls we would hit the beach one last time. Rather than end what had otherwise been a great weekend on a low note, We started wringing out towels and geared up for one last hurrah at a Lake Michigan beach in the small coastal town of Manistee. After grabbing a quick breakfast in town, we drove down to the beach and were greeted with bad news. Red flags were flying. A storm had blown in the night before and the wind was still whipping, especially along the shoreline. The sun was out and the temperatures warm, but the storm's effects lingered and the water was rough. People who have never experienced Lake Michigan are often surprised. It can resemble the Atlantic Ocean at times. Google Lake Michigan surfing and check out the videos of people riding waves to get some perspective. It was one of those days. The red flags are not prohibitive. People are allowed to venture out in the water, but the flags indicate that there are risks involved. While the girls played on the playground for a few minutes, Heather and I discussed whether we would heed the red flag warning or let the girls dive in. We decided that as long as I was out in the water with them and our twins wore life jackets, that we would let them loose in the waves. It turned out to be the highlight of the weekend. Our oldest had a blast body surfing in the waves, and the twins learned that diving into and under the waves was far preferable to trying to jump up and over waves and having its crest smack you in the chest. It was exhausting and exhilarating for them, and we had a quiet, peaceful ride home as the girls snoozed in the back after all of the sun and surf. I'm not 100% sure that letting them swim on a red flag day was the right decision. Yes, there were some risks involved. But there's never full certainty about safety any time in life. One thing that we've found, however, is that some of our closest calls we've had with our kids is when the risks seem low and the conditions idyllic. It's in those moments that it's easy to let your guard down. It's when we relax that they, ever curious, ever adventurous, find ways to put themselves in unimaginably precarious positions. There are metaphorical red flags everywhere. Knowing when to let kids push past boundaries is like knowing when to have kids in the first place, uncertain. As the father of young girls, I'm particularly attuned to this. 
I know how I played as a kid, rough and tumble. But I find myself wanting to protect and shelter my girls more than I believe I would if I had boys. Apparently, I'm not alone in this instinct. A 2015 study published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health found that girls are less likely to be exposed to the benefits of risky play, which refers to unstructured environments involving perceived elements of danger. Think running through the woods unsupervised, moving at high rates of speed, and dangling precariously from monkey bars. The study found that we, as a society, are teaching girls to be scared and that they are more vulnerable to risk than boys. As a result, girls are not benefiting by developing the social skills, resilience, creativity, and self-esteem that risky play fosters. Kids need to learn to respect red flags, but not always adhere to them. Growth comes from pushing past them. It's easy to be crippled by fears of bad consequences. This is true throughout life. As adults, Red flags come in many different forms, from fears of not fitting in to settling for comfort over chasing your true calling. There are potential downsides to each decision. But life is too short and precious to always travel the safe, smooth path. Sometimes, despite the red flags, you have to dive right in. You just listened to the post titled, When to Embrace Life's Red Flags by Jay Harrington of lifeandwim.com. Look, payday's awesome, but running payroll, calculating taxes and deductions, staying compliant, that's not easy. Unless, of course, you have Gusto. Gusto's payroll and HR services can make it a little easier. Gusto was designed for you, the small business owner. They take the pain out of running a business by automatically calculating paychecks, filing payroll taxes, setting up open enrollment. Gusto takes it all off your plate. But that's not all. Time tracking, health insurance, 401k, onboarding, commuter benefits, offer letters, access to HR experts, you get the idea. With Gusto, you can focus on the joy of running your business just like you always wanted to. It's what we use here. It's super easy to set up and get started. And if you're moving from another provider, Gusto can transfer all your data for you. It's no surprise 94% of customers are likely to recommend Gusto, 94. Here's the best part. Because you're a listener, you get three months totally free. All you have to do is go to gusto.com slash old. Again, that's gusto.com slash O-L-D. I'm telling you, you're gonna love Gusto. Get started today. Dreaming of a better sleep? Tossing and turning is not your destiny. And Ollie is here to help. Ollie invites you to sink into sweet, sweet slumber to improve your mental and physical health and overall wellness. More than just melatonin, Ollie's ingredients help you unwind your mind for a delightfully dreamy drift off. Sleep is on the way at Ollie.com. That's O L L Y.com. And thanks so much to Jay for this great post today. I really like this one. It's, it's just so important for parents to regularly check in with themselves about how much they're protecting children versus how many mistakes they're letting them make and learn from on their own. There's definitely a fine line, as Jay mentions, but I love the note he ended on regarding the respect of red flags, even if there's not always adherence to them. So if you struggle to know when it's all right to allow your children to push past those red flags, another way of keeping tabs on this matter is by actively discussing risk with your children. Of course, this discussion and its impending result will change as the kids get older, But having conversations that explore the risks and benefits of any given situation can really help your children stay more aware and better prepare them to make their own decisions and set their own boundaries. Surely parents will have the final say in this, especially when children are young. But it's never a mistake to communicate with children about your concerns in a way that's appropriate for where they're at in their development. This shows your care and it offers a chance for your bond to strengthen. So that'll do it, everybody. Parents, looks like you might have some new things to talk about with your kids this weekend, but we've still got another post before then. So be sure to come on back tomorrow for the Friday show, where we will dig into more parenting content and where your optimal life awaits.